KZ Guy 2 here again, no nonsense, no how. Today working on this 2009 BMW F800 GS behind me. And today I'm going to try and show you a quick run through on how to check the valve clearance on it, replace the valve cover gaskets, and replace the spark plugs. Going to try to keep this short, so excuse me if I go too fast or miss anything. If I do miss anything, usually I'll update the description with that, so make sure to check out for that. If it helps you out, I appreciate a thumbs up, or maybe even toss me a subscribe because that helps my channel out. Now I've already got the valve cover off, but I did put this bike back together partially just to give you a run through on how to disassemble it. The reason I'm doing my valve cover gaskets is you can see they're leaking pretty bad down the side. Uh, I heard there was actually a recall on these earlier ones. Apparently they didn't make the gaskets thick enough, somebody told me. But regardless, this bike has 9,000 miles on it and the valve clearance check is due at 12,000 miles. So I'm going to check that too. Now I'll try and plug links down below for anything I use in this video, but you're going to want to get yourself an OEM valve cover gasket set. You can see that comes with the new bolts on it too. New set of spark plugs, some dielectric grease, and maybe even a new air filter if you haven't done that recently. Your bike might vary a little bit, but the tools I used are right here. T25, 30, and T40 Torx, a number three Phillips. Got a thin wall 5 8 spark plug socket. A set of feeler gauges that are contoured like that, make it a little bit easier. A 13 and 8 millimeter wrench, a small flat blade screwdriver, a spark plug gapper, and a magnet. To get started, we're going to remove the plastic fairing. So you got four torques on top of here. This is going to pop right out of your way. And then you're going to remove the torques going all the way around. You got this is going to be the same on both sides, one down here and a couple more up front. I also had, you know, this one here and the windscreen was bolted through. That's what I used the 8 millimeter for. This looks to be an aftermarket windshield on here, but that was bolted through the fairing. There was also some wiring in there for the auxiliary lights, but with all those screws off and the wiring off, just popped that right out of the way. Then you come up top, start getting your wiring. All these clips are pretty simple to get off if you look at them up close. Number three or 10 millimeter on the battery bolts here and two torques holding this uh, bracket in place and get your battery out of there. Next, get the electrical connections off of your uh, air box up here. Again, these are pretty simple if you're looking at them, but you can see mine are already off. Remove these two torques under the battery and the two eight millimeter nuts on these studs in the back. Pop this hose off on the front. And you're ready to take this box off. As you slide it up off the throttle bodies, there are no clamps holding these boots on, so that's no problem. However, there is this T-connection in the back. It's going to have three hoses going on it, and they all slipped off pretty easily. And you're going to have that big breather hose right there with the green print going to the nipple on the bottom here. As soon as you get this air box off, it's a great idea to cover up your throttle bodies. I had some plugs laying around that kind of just fit perfectly in there. But some tape will do. Just if you stuff it full of paper towels, make sure not to leave them in there. With the air box off, I've removed my four Torx holding this air filter on here. Checks my air filter. Well, it looks to be just fine. Not a bad idea to replace it if yours is dirty. Now at this point, before you go any further, if you haven't done already, make sure to clean this whole area out. It's really a good idea to pressure wash this bike before you do this job, but clean all around the whole head and get all the dust and dirt out of there. The cleaner, the better. Pop your ignition coil connectors off, and I used pliers to pull mine up. You can see I put a little chip in there though. Not a big deal, but if you just wiggle this back and forth, they're, they're a little tight to get out of there. And once you get the coils off, I like to take a dab of dielectric grease, put that in there so when you install it, it's nice and lubed up. Get your throttle cable off by threading that nut off the backside, pulling this forward, out the groove there. And then if you open the throttle plate and hold there, you can slip the cable off the backside there. On the clutch cable, you loosen these two 13 millimeter nuts, and then you can slide the cable right off of there and pop it out. Again, pull it through the top and tuck it out the way. On this main harness, I had to cut a few zip ties off of here and pop this one out of the frame to get this wire out of the way here. Then remove your four bolts holding on. They're going to be a T40. And with all that, we're ready to pop this cover out of here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but should slide out with ease for the most part. Now pop your old gaskets out of there. You got this center one and a big one here. 
Make sure this uh, sealant, the old sealant around these uh, plugs right here, you don't want to get that all all off of the engine here. Make sure that it doesn't drop inside. Go around this whole thing with a paper towel. Make sure there's nothing else, no foreign debris. I noticed also had this rubber uh, seal here. I guess this is for the crankcase breather. Mine seems to be in good shape. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to replace that, but still in good shape. So take your valve cover over to a parts washer, clean that up nice. I didn't remove this crankcase breather on the top. Seems to be nice and clean. All right, now we're going to use the 5A socket to pop these spark plugs out. I had to use a few different sockets before I got the right one. It is a tight fit in there. If you're not using a spark plug socket, a small magnet comes in handy for getting the plugs out of there. All right, with those spark plugs out, engine should be pretty easy to rotate. So we're going to put this up into the sixth gear. Take your right hand on the back wheel and you're going to be watching these camshafts. Now rotate the engine until you see that notch and that, that notch back there. Back here, you can't really see it that well. Lined up with the surface on the cylinder head. And then you're ready to check the valve clearance on the right side. You can slip that feeler gauge. Again, it's going to look like this. You're going to slip that under each of these cam lobes in between the, the uh, shim on the bucket there. And then our specs are going to be as follows. Your intake side is going to be on the rear of the motorcycle. You can pause that if you need to look at those. And the exhaust tied toward the front of the motorcycle. Or I just noticed they're actually listed right on the air box right here. You can see that uh, on the exhaust, 0.27, not 0.28, but same difference. Once you're done checking with your feeler gauge, the intake and the exhaust on, I guess that's cylinder number two, but the right side, you're going to again put your hand on that back wheel and kind of kicking it forward, rotate that until... Until these two notches in the center come lined up with each other like so. And then you're going to do the same thing on the left side cylinder. You can see the lobes are pointed uh, kind of both up in the same orientation. That means you're ready to adjust that side. Not if they're pointed down like this side is on the right. And just to show you a quick example of how to adjust them, I'm going to be doing an intake here. So I started with the uh, 0.203 millimeter and took it and tried slipping it in between the cam and the bucket there it's tight will not go in see it snapped coming out of there just trying to start and then i took the 0.178 millimeter and when i try to slide that underneath of this uh intake cam oh it slides right in nice and free so we can see them right at the bottom of the spec some guys might want to adjust that and bring it to the center i'm completely fine with that not gonna be an issue for me of course, doing the exhaust side is a little bit tighter, and you can see why not having a bent or contoured feeler gauge might be a little bit harder. Of course, you can always just bend your feeler gauges too. And remember, you don't want to be jamming these things under there. It should slip under with little to no resistance if the clearance is proper. Don't be trying to shove it in there. But if it slides in with no resistance at all, just keep going up one size until it doesn't go in, and then you know what your clearance is. And when I say adjust, I mean check, because mine were all within spec, so I'm not going to be doing any adjusting here. I'd be a little bit upset if they were out of spec with the low mileage on it. Uh, if you do need to adjust yours, you're going to need to replace these shims with different ones. Uh, again, that's going to be a whole other video, so check it out in the future. Maybe I'll be doing one, but I'm sure there's some others online if you search. However, I won't leave you hanging without giving you some assembly tips. Uh, after cleaning up this valve cover gasket, really important to get inside this groove zero oil in here. So that way when you're pushing the new valve cover gasket on, it's going to stick in there nice and firm. Worst case, you might have to use little dabs of silicone, which the best silicone in the world is, we all know, the right stuff. Permatex, the right stuff. But the uh, point is, is when you're putting this on, you want to make sure that you don't have this gasket pop out and then you're going to have an oil leak. Also, that gasket on the camshaft there, you saw it, not gasket get the, the little grommet in there make sure that lines up properly and you don't push it off with this crankcase breather when you're pushing it on and on these little built-in plugs you can see the factory had some silicone on there i really recommend taking some of this right stuff don't go crazy with it but just a little light coating on this whole lobe right here to keep that from leaking in the future i also recommend taking a dab of grease and coating these uh, grommets on the new bolts 
so they uh, are lubricated nice and good. And of course your center gasket, that goes in either way it looks like. It doesn't seem to be directional, but you're going to just set that right inside the engine right here before you go on. Before you put those new spark plugs in, make sure to use a plug gapper like this one. Check the gap. These are the specs I was able to find online. Uh, don't quote me on them, but my new spark plugs were dead perfect. Didn't have to adjust them. I'm not sure on the torque specs for the valve cover, but I just do good and tight for everything. Never had a problem. And I can't say it enough, but when you're slipping this new valve cover in, you got to be very careful to, get, you know, you don't have a lot of room here, so you don't want to hook it on here and, and pop that gasket off. Now I hate to cut short, but I got to get my bike together. Hopefully I didn't miss too much there. Again, I just wanted to give you a run through and show you the basics on what is involved with this job. Give it a thumbs up if it helps out. Consider subscribing. Check out the channel. This is KZ Guy 2 here. No nonsense, no how. And I'll see you next time.